Lisa here. In this tutorial, I'll be sharing some handy tips for getting the most out of paper stock, my seamless paper texture brushes for Procreate. You'll learn how to apply the texture for best results, how to resize paper grain, and pick up some other useful tricks along the way. So, let's dive in! When opening up the brush set, you'll notice the brushes are neatly organized into sections, each clearly labeled based on the type of paper. But don't be afraid to experiment. Just because I've labeled it watercolor paper doesn't mean that you have to only use it with watercolor artwork. Definitely try mixing things up like perhaps using the cardstock paper with watercolor artwork for unique and unexpected results. I've included a collection of four color palettes to help you get started. If you're unsure which color to pick for your top paper texture layer or what works best on craft paper, for example, these palettes are a great starting point. You'll find the suggested palette for each section in its label, but of course these are just starting points so please do experiment and try your own combinations. The four palettes each include a white swatch, which I'll explain more about later, and a suggested color for the top paper texture that I found to match those particular colors well. For the palette name Top Texture, these are suggestions you can try for the top paper layer that sits above your artwork. Each include lighter shades for a more subtle look. Each brush comes with a duo partner. You'll see a top texture brush, this is for overlaying above your artwork, and a bottom brush for applying your background color underneath your artwork. I've clearly labeled them top and bottom so that you know what brush to use where. Of course, you don't have to use the bottom brush to apply paper texture to your work, but it is a great way to enhance the paper texture effect and add extra depth to your artwork. Here's an example of what artwork looks like with and without the bottom texture. You'll notice that there's quite a difference in the final result. And the darker the background, the more intense the texture will be as well. I'm going to walk you through two different methods you can use to apply the paper texture effect to your work. Both involve using different blend modes in Procreate. If you're using a bottom brush to apply the background color, go ahead and create a new layer underneath your artwork and choose the brush labeled bottom. With your preferred color selected, apply the texture in one pass without lifting your pencil. Now we can apply the top texture using one of the following methods. I find that the linear burn method creates the most intense results. So to use this method, start by creating a layer above your artwork. Now we're going to fill that layer with white. This will intensify the interaction between the texture and your artwork. So each color palette includes a white swatch for your convenience, so you can just simply drag and drop the color onto your canvas. Next, choose your paper color. It can be pure black if you like, or you can explore the various options available in the palettes. So for this example, I'll be using this color. Now, using one of the brushes labeled top, fill your entire canvas in a single pass without lifting your pencil. Keep in mind that we're still working on that same layer that we filled with white. And finally, we're going to change that blend mode to linear burn and adjust the opacity slider until you're happy with the results. This is the method I use the most in my own work because it provides a lot of flexibility and control when mixing the two blend modes. To use this method, start by creating a new layer above your artwork and select the color for your paper texture. As before, we're gonna choose a brush labeled top, 
and we're going to fill the entire layer with that texture using a single pass without lifting our pencil. Now set that layer to multiply, which we'll adjust the opacity in a minute. Next, we're going to choose a color from our artwork. I generally choose the dominant color and, and usually go slightly darker. Now we're going to create a new layer underneath our multiply layer and using the same paper brush, apply texture with that color of your choice. Set that layer to color burn. Now it's time to experiment with the opacity. I usually keep the multiply layer at a lower opacity compared to the color burn layer. So if we zoom in here, you'll notice how the texture interacts with different areas of the artwork. So the color becomes varied instead of a flat uniform look. Feel free to mix and match different paper textures. One of my favorite ways to do this is by using a different bottom brush to the top texture brush. For example, using a craft paper brush for the base and a watercolor brush for the top. You can also layer two different top texture brushes. I'd recommend making one of them the dominant texture for a more natural look. And don't forget about the specks and fiber brushes. They're perfect for adding quick, gritty details to make your artwork feel even more organic. One of the handy features the brushes have is the ability to quickly adjust the paper grain. This is particularly handy when working on different size canvases. If you do adjust the grain, be sure to adjust the grain for both top and bottom brushes to ensure the texture lines up when using them together. To adjust the grain, with your chosen brush selected, tap once to open the brush studio. Now tap on grain section. To make any changes to the grain size, move the slider under scale section to increase or decrease the size of your paper texture. Be sure not to increase too much, as with all pixel images, the quality will start to deteriorate if you go too large. But you shouldn't need to enlarge too much. All the textures are high res designed to be used on large canvases. For precise scaling, you can tap on the percentage figure and then enter your new amount. This is particularly handy for adjusting both top and bottom brushes with precision, which need to be the same amount for the texture grain to line up. Once you're happy with the new size, tap done to save the changes. If you'd like to reset the brush back to its original state, tap on the brush to open the brush studio. Then navigate to About This Brush, then tap on Reset, confirm the reset, and then tap Done. That's it! I hope you found these tips helpful and that you're inspired to experiment with different paper textures in your work. Thanks for watching and happy creating!